Well, today is an exciting day for me. I've traded in the old donk and I've graded to an absolute beast of a four stroke 50 horsepower Mercury. Big thanks to Mercury and this man right here, Andrew from Melbourne Marine Centre. How are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. How are you going? I'm fantastic. That's the go. Even better today, and that's all because of this big shiny beast. Absolutely. So applications make our life a lot easier these days, and Mercury created an app called... Vessel View Mobile. Ves Vessel View Mobile. That's right. And how does that work? So basically it's a Bluetooth module that's yep. plugged into the engine's uh, computer. This motor's got one? Yeah, this engine has one. Fantastic. Uh, and what it does is it links through the Bluetooth on your phone, your smartphone, to the module yep. and makes that connection very much the similar connection that you have in your car yep. uh, so they can communicate to one another but it allows you to see things like engine rpm hours fuel flow now with the hours it's um with someone without tacos on their boat it's going to come in very handy exactly right for tiller steels like this yeah tiller steer engines that don't have you know a console or something mm -hmm. like that to, to run a, a gauge cluster yep. uh, you've got the ability to see it all now you know, the, the ability of your, of your mobile phone. That's great. That's great. That is absolutely fantastic. Now, there's another feature the Mercury's have, mate, and it's a longer tiller arm. That's right. Which you told me would be a great asset for my boat to have. And looking at it, you're right, because the other one wasn't nearly long enough. That's it. Um, and I reckon I could knock the cameraman off the front of the boat with this one. So, <laughs> yeah. so what's the advantage of having the extra long tiller stick? So, so having that bigger tiller handle, Mercury's big tiller, they call it, um, obviously brings the tiller closer to the driver where yep. you've got your bulkheads in the rear of the boat. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more of a comfortable driving position. Yep. Um, your, your power tilt and trim's right on your thumb. Uh, you have the ability to... So no more hitting sandbars? No, exactly <laughs> right. Trim it up and get it out of the way first before you dredge the channel. Yes. Um, you've got the ability to adjust the, the steering friction as well as the throttle friction. Yep. Um, and you also have a nice, big, easy to, to utilise yep. um, throttle position, I guess, or throttle shift. Excellent. Forward, neutral, and reverse. Wow, this comes with it all. Mm, it's got everything. Now, compared to the old 32 stroke I had, mate, mm -hmm. we've got a 54 stroke. Yep. Now, I know there's one thing I'm not going to miss, and that's the smell of the oily fuel coming out of the boat. Yep. What, what are the sort of differences now with the newer four strokes compared to the sort of older two strokes that are becoming obsolete? Yeah, so the main difference that most people would comment on is they're smoother, mm -hmm. they're a hell of a lot quieter. Mm -hmm. The, the mixing of the oil and the petrol, which you, you don't have to worry about. And yep. obviously the, the strong fumes that you'll get with the two stroke, you just don't get it anymore with the four stroke. So smoother, quieter, and a hell of a lot better on fuel as well. Well, it's every reason everyone should be out there trading up to a four stroke. Yeah. Well, I've already been on Chris's and everything you just said is 100% accurate. And that's why I really can't wait to get out on this. So four stroke, it's the future. It is, absolutely, yep. Melbourne, Victoria. We're in the Frog Pond. Mornington. <laughs> How good is this place? It is a beautiful part of Australia yeah. and we are here bright and early in the morning, yeah. mate. Sun's coming up. Well, Jeez. sun's up now. Um, have a look at this sunrise. And look at the jet stream across the sky. <laughs> How good is this? It gets distracted easily. Mate, I mate do. we're trying out the new Mercs today. Taking the Mercs. We're taking the new Mercs for their pretty much their first spin. Yep. I say pretty much already. I'm speaking on our first that's okay. <laughs> but um, we're getting your 60 four stroke, my 50 four stroke, and we're going to put them through their paces. Yep, just run them in. Yep. So we can really give them what they've got. I'm not sure if you're actually getting this in the camera, but just to give you an idea of how quiet this thing is, I'm not talking any louder than I normally talk. You barely even. Uh, I do talk a bit loud. I know that, but but. This is just how loud it is at idle. You can barely even hear the thing. Like on the boat, when you are fishing and the boat's idling, you don't need to scream. It's not like the old two strokes where you're kind of yelling at each other. It's fantastic. Get on the boat. Let's go, cameraman. Beautiful morning. It is absolutely 
these are the days you dream about. Days where you have work going, oh, look how flat it is, I wish I was fishing. Well, that's today. I was fighting that banjo shark, and um, <laughs> I got a double header on the other rod. Barracuda at a flatty. <laughs> uh, both very small. That explained the little fish jumping around everywhere. I thought it might have been little pilchards with the salmon chasing them, but it's um, looks like it's been flooded, and they've tangled that up a tree. The Ozfish team's just been lucky enough to update our trailers from uh, galvanised trailers to Spitfire aluminium trailers. These are possibly the best trailers I've ever seen in my life. They are uh, obviously aluminium, they're lighter, they're strong, they're very well engineered. These trailers are assembled in Australia. Um, really good quality componentry, absolute rippers. Let's go through some features. Aluminium um, formed H-beams which give a lot of strength. We go back. We've got pinion style suspension. It's not actually uh, leaf springs, which are the first things that rust out on your, um, on your normal trailers. So they've got pinion style suspension, which is great. Alloy wheels are standard. Uh, all LED lighting all the way around. Quick release LED lighting as well. So if you need to change something over quick, you just simply undo that and off it plugs. Um, good quality roller assembly. They're light. I don't know if you can see that. Like. It's, that's a very, very light trailer. They're just really great quality. And we've got easy access bearings. So you've got your grease nipple inside there. So in order to, all you do is pretty much put your grease gun on there, pump it full, and put your cap back on. Without, uh, without going into the commercials of it, they're comparative to price with galvanized trailers. Now that's ridiculous because galvanized trailer, the theory behind it is if you get 10 years, you're pretty lucky. With these, they're, you sort of anticipate, I mean, they're a fairly new product, but aluminium doesn't corrode in the same way that galvanized steel does. Um, initial initial um, specifications are looking around about 20 years. So double the time, potentially triple the time. They have done a lot of challenge testing with them and uh, all results are good. But aluminium does perform a lot better in salt water. So potentially, let's wait and see. Right, it's another little flatty. So again, I'll show you the trick because I know it takes it takes a few. It took me a while to get to do it properly. So just screw the hook like that, hold him out straight, and just drop him off. He's gone. So I got a bit of a spread of rods out. Uh, sun's up. It's glassed out, which often doesn't help the fishing. It slows it down a little bit. Um, makes fish a little bit more timid, a little bit less on the bite. Um, but yeah, how relaxing is this? Put your feet up, watch your rods, watch the city come to life, or watch Mornington come to life at least. It doesn't get much better than this. If, if cameramen had bought the chips, life would be a lot better. Oh no, this is a keeper. Got a good flatty mix. First flatty, and ansets, and it's a keeper. That's exactly what we came out here for. I am now a very happy man. I have flathead for dinner. There you go. It's just over 30 centimetres.
it then. That was the cooter strip I put out. This one's got a bit of fight to it. Bit of bouncing going on down there. Hopefully it's something decent. Um, it's a seven gill shark. That is cool. They're a cool looking shark, seven gillers. They're a very unique shark. And they're a very old shark. Closely related to the tiger shark. Believe it or not, they're actually older than a tiger shark. And when they're little like this, and they've got all those spots on them, they're a very cool looking critter. Well, that was pretty cool. Let's get a little bit of variety out here. Can't get enough of your love, baby. Some things you can't get used to, no matter how I try. Apparently dancing brings a fish on. <laughs> the big rods out, the little rods, it's good with the, the bigger rod when I've just got that little ball sinker going straight to the hook. It, um, it allows us to fish all different sections of the water column. So we've got that little whiting snatches at the bottom. So you've got your small bait, you've got your bigger bait, your snapper snatcher, which is straight at the bottom. And then you've got your little ball sinker, which is going straight out and it drips along, because we're at drift, we're not anchoring. So it just sort of sits around, you know, three quarters down mid water, just to see, because, you know, there's all sorts of different species out here. And there's um, plenty of these guys. You just never know what's around. Definitely got some weight to it, could be another banjo. Hope not. Had a bit more fight than a banjo shark normally puts up though, so... Well, like it actually wants to swim away. <laughs> but, sometimes they can be quite deceiving. And, no, nah, just a big banjo. There he is. You may have seen on the news, a lot of people out there have been really cruelly harming these sort of fish because they're a bycatch and they're unwanted. Well, I can tell you one thing, it's not a banjo shark's fault that it's a banjo shark and it still has its place in the system. So if you don't want it, just put it back and let it swim off. Well, if it's a nice day, and you want to come out and you don't have a boat, there are high boats down here in Mornington. You can come right out to where we are and do exactly what we're doing. Might not be for the uh, hardcore angler, but the kids would definitely enjoy it. Oh, that's another seven giller. Quite a reefy area down here, I believe, so. Yeah, little seven gill pup. That's a keeper. Hey, now that's a keeper, Flatty. He's nice and fat too. Swivel's tape measure out. He is 33 centimetres. And that's a keeper. 
Another five more like him and I've got myself some dinner. <laughs> Bloody tails. There is no better eating fish, in my opinion. The trick is that you don't get excited. Try to get excited, tense your shoulders up and start reeling like you're, you know. You just gotta take your time. There's a bit to the, bit of weight in it, just slowly lift it up, wind down, lift up, wind down, and keep that tension. It's when you lose tension is when you lose fish. And a gummy shark. And a flathead. <laughs> the bay is alive and well with babies. <laughs> These big tiller arms are great because you can put them right out of the way. It's actually got a fair bit of poke in it. Probably a little pinky or something. Oh no, it's too flathead. <laughs> and they're lively little critters. <sighs> Flathead are really deceptive, sometimes, irrespective of having two. Sometimes you think you've got a big one. You've got yeah, I know. Little ones put in some punch sometimes, don't they? Yeah. Just watch that. <sighs> I don't want to catch your rod. Right in the tip. Hey, you've got to be careful. Those little spikes get you. They say the trick is to rub it on its belly. Acts as an anticoagulant. Over there, what's the big side? Oh yeah, this is good. Whoa, that's no flatty. If it is, it's big. It's a little pinky. <laughs> but he's a keeper. There we go, a little snapper. He put up a much bigger fight than what the little flathead had been giving me. Nice little guy. Check the size of him. He's 31 centimeters, so he's definitely a keeper. But I'm after flathead today, not snapper. So back you go, matey. Just plop you back in the water here. Now, by looking at him, he's he had quite a big belly, so that tells me the barometer's not high at all. It's low, so that uh, that makes the bellies expand, or he's just been eating a lot. What it is, I think. Come on. He's coming home. That's a good one. Yeah. He's definitely coming home. Well, that's what we wanted to try and get some keeper flathead. And now we've got some. When we get back to the ramp. I'm going to show you a little special way of how to fillet them because they can be quite tricky. A lot of people just chop the tails off, but there's a better way. Well, we're tethered together. Yeah, it's a bit intimate, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's a little bit too cosy. So we've uh, we've got a few flathead. We've had a bit of a there's some funny little cooter and stuff, wasn't there? Which you don't often see. No, a little bring baby a little, cooter. Yeah, it was good bait. Must be spawning <laughs> at the moment. But you know, it's been nice. It was glassed out earlier. We've got a little bit of wind coming uh, in. A bit of a sea breeze is coming. Still good conditions, though. I mean, the morning's been beautiful. But um, yeah, so Mick, you're going to head back to the ramp and uh, do a bit of a flathead demonstration. 
Yeah, mate, Imagine. we're just going to yeah, fill out a couple of these flathead up and um, show the viewers how they can easily fill it flathead. Yep. Because they can be quite tricky because of the spikes on them, people get a bit nervous. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, mate, and I might even have a bit of a squid fish on the way back in too. Sounds like a plan. But you've got to head off. Yeah, I've got some family stuff I've got to do. So, yeah, um, I reckon we might uh, we might call it a day, buddy. It's already called that. Oh, we're not reinventing the wheel, are we? <laughs> see you later, pal. All right, see you later, Mickey boy. Take it easy. <laughs> So we've been out at Port Phillip Bay today and we've caught a feed of flathead. Now, I've seen a lot of people try and fill it flathead. Some do it right, some do it wrong, and I struggled for years until I saw someone do it properly. And now I want to show you guys how I saw it done and I thought this is fantastic. You might already know, but if you don't, that's a great tip. So, first you need sharp knives. Now, I'm using um, with some fillety knives from Wasabi, which are black magic, Japanese steel, very good very sharp knives, they last a long time. So don't try and do this with your, your blunt bait knife because you'll probably end up cutting yourself. And they say that the deadliest knife is a blunt knife because they're the ones that will actually cut you. So there's got these spines here which I'm always warning people about because I always get stung and they are still active when the fish is dead. So try and be careful of them. Basically you go under that bottom fin there and you cut on a 45 down towards the head to hit the backbone. Rotate the knife around and just run down the spine. And just before you get to the end, stop. Flip the fillet over and then just run the fillet down, run the knife down along the side of the skin. When you can actually pinch the skin, move it towards you on a zigzag sort of side pattern. And as you get to the end, get rid of the guts. You can just rip it off. And it takes half the bones out too. There's usually a few little ones left. So you just cut a little V. And get rid of that rib cage. And then you've got a nice flatty tail, no bones in it. Put that in your bowl and fill it the other side. So again, under that fin, straight towards the head, along that backbone, as close as you can, you want to save all that meat. Flip the fillet over, run your knife along the skin, keep it flat, pull that skin towards you like so. And you can rip it off at the end. So now I've made a big mess and I've got my fillets in a bowl. Rinse them out with a bit of salty water. Get all the muck off them. A bit of flour breadcrumbs, however you like to cook them. I like to roll them up in foil, a bit of onion, garlic, a bit of butter, and uh, just let them slow cook on the oven or the hot rocks on the barbecue and they come up a treat. <laughs>